welcome back to another episode of Wrestle Capsule, where you're going to be getting your weekly dose of pro wrestling talk. And I'm your host, B. So welcome back to the show. So I want to talk to you guys about Monday Night Raw. Um, let's just get right into it. So uh, the first match of the night was Judgment Day, Finn Balor, and Damian Priest versus Rey Mysterio and AJ Styles. Now, while I love Judgment Day, like I, I love the whole storyline between Judgment Day and the Mysterios, I feel like this match was good, but I don't feel like it moved the storyline along anymore to to help it out or anything like that. Like part of me is starting to not necessarily get bored of the storyline, but I'm wondering what's going to happen because only thing I'm thinking about right now is Dominic Mysterio having a match with his father. Like I feel like those two going at it, like I feel like everyone's waiting for that. And Ray is trying his absolute hardest to not pop <laughs> the crap out of his son. Uh, and by the way, speaking of Dominic Mysterio, you know, almost every time the Judgment Day starts off Monday Night Raw, or matter of fact, whenever they come out, you know, they always have their promo. And when Dominic was talking this time, when all four of them were in the ring before the match, I noticed that Dominic was like smirking a lot. And like that just, just when I think he's trying to move forward in his heel his new heel character i get brought back to reality <laughs> i feel like i forgot what which episode of monday night raw it was but all all four of the judgment day members were out there and i think it was when they were in california and dominic mysterio got booed beyond all recognition it was so bad like it was so loud and i talked to you guys about that in one of my episodes and i felt like he handled that so well so to come back here and he's he's why are you smirking like i could see if you're you're smirking like a devious smirk but it didn't seem like a devious smirk it just seemed like dominic mysterio was coming out of his character that he's supposed to play and like okay let me get back serious again let me get back serious again dominic that that just confirms to wrestling fans out there who do not believe you can pull off this whole heel persona off that you can't pull it off so i am trying to keep up a lot and <laughs> hope that eventually i don't know what is gonna have to happen in order for dominic mysterio to get that fire up in his butt crack to actually be heel all the way 120 percent even the whole promo that he did in the dark <laughs> he did good on that so it's like last thing i want to see is for him to move two to three steps back after making progress but yeah like i said before overall the match between uh judgment day versus aj styles and ray mysterio of course it, it it was great but like i said before it i don't think it moved the storyline along so the next match of the night was a match between the united states champion bobby lashley versus mustafa ali so i am a fan of ali very much so uh there are a few matches that i saw when he was in 205 and they were so freaking good so to see him on raw having a match with bobby lashley like that was cool i think it all started when um bobby lashley was having his interview with kevin and bobby's basically talking about how he like his next opponent like he's look what he's looking forward to for his next match and then mustafa ali just interrupts and is just all cocky and just coming out like just pointing on him and just being disres disrespectful i thought that bobby was gonna <laughs> whoop him right then and there but he was just like all right i'll give you an opportunity you can have your match tonight and i'm just like oh snap we'll stop at least getting a match with bobby lashley this match overall was so good and i feel like it definitely not only showcased of course the dominance of our united states champion bobby lashley but it also showcased how talented mustafa ali is and how 
underutilized he has been in WWE for years. And I'm so happy that Triple H is pushing his underrated superstars out there to have these mainstream matches. So yeah, overall, it was really good. Uh, in the end, you know, <laughs> Bobby Lashley won that. He freaking speared the crap out of him. And then he put him in a hurt lock. And you know, whenever you get in Bobby Lashley's hurt lock, like you've done, like you, you, you tap it out like you're done. There's there's no more match after that. The promo between Matt Riddle and Seth Rollins. I've said this countless times on my show. When I tell you this fight pit match at Extreme Rules is going to be incredible. I, I, I believe this wholeheartedly. And I love how they were going back and forth with one another and they they, they can't touch each other. They can't touch each other before the match on Saturday. So, you know, Rollins is gonna take advantage of that and start talking about people's kids and talking about people's ex-wife and all that stuff like that. And then Riddle, you could see it, Riddle. He was just ready to just throw hands and let's go. But then Riddle was just like, okay, well, um, <laughs> let me talk about Becky Lynch, your wife, and she's better than you. And you could just see <laughs> Rollins' face, like he could, he can dish it out, but he can't take it. So oh, it was just, it was so, so good to see them do that. Ugh, I'm, I'm, I, I cannot, I cannot wait. So to be totally honest, the match between Candice LeRae and Dakota Kai lacked luster. I. I, ugh, I'm i so happy that Candice LeRae is back after, you know, being on maternity, matern, paternal, wait, maternity leave. Girl, come on. Quite honestly, it's not, I'm not even gonna blame this on her. This match was, eh. A big reason why is because of Dakota Kai. I don't know what is going on, but I don't remember this Dakota Kai in NXT when she was having them crazy matches, especially with Tegan Knox. Like I don't I, I don't know what's going on. And like I'm just gonna move straight into the whole damage control thing. Like I was excited when you got Bailey, Eel Sky, and Dakota Kai. Like they're the heel stable. I felt like they were like supposed to be uh the better version of Riot Squad. That's just me, my, you know wrestling association like I was like oh my gosh they're gonna be the new rice crop and better because I've been always wanting some sort of female stable on the main roster just tearing it up tearing through all the women in the division but I feel like this damage control stable is not looking up to what I was expecting now I don't like I said before I don't know what's going on with Dakota but like there was some good offenses within the match, but I'm so getting over, and I get it, they're heel, yada, yada, yada. I'm so sick and tired of seeing Bailey and EO Sky, or vice versa, if you switch it around, you have one of the members of Damage Control in there, and then two of the other ones on ringside. Like, they're always interfering in each other's matches so that they win, and I'm just like, yes, heels do that you know they cheat you know lie and cheat and steal i get it at some point you have to show dominance in other ways like actually overpowering your opponent by yourself and winning a match not relying on your other two stable mates like and it's getting old to me because we're seeing this time and time again every single week so i'm starting to get over damage control and i and i think that sucks because Dakota Kai and Io Sky have the women's tag team championships and Bailey is gunning for the Raw Women's Championship for I mean at Extreme Rules against Bianca Belair. So and a part of me feels like she's gonna win it. I have I have a feeling like it would I don't know. Do I want Bailey to win it? Mm, no, I don't. I like I feel like Bianca Belair is having her best run as champion. Like, I feel like this right here is the best I've seen Bianca in her in her championship reign. And I'm and I'm and I'm absolutely loving it. And I'm I'm seeing her as the locker room leader, especially in what reiterates that idea of her being the rock locker room 
leader is the fact that she has two women outside of, I mean two women in the women's division who are not technically a tag team by her side Alexa Bliss and Asuka so I feel like that that right there just solidifies her as the locker room leader and I like that so I mean if they do put it on Bailey at Extreme Rules it would I mean it would just it, I guess it I don't know I don't know I mean I would see it because her stable mates have gold so she's gunning for gold so the whole stable would have championships like I, I could see it from that aspect but I feel like Bailey needs more time like she's not the way she used to be and I get it she's coming off of injury she's been out for a while so like I get it but I don't know I, I I don't think she's I don't think she's ready yet. And like I said, I feel like damage control, they need each and every one of those members whenever they're in a single competitor match. They need to stand on their own two feet because otherwise the these belts and these wins are I just throw them under the table. Like they don't mean very much to me because of how they're being won. So I get the whole match between Otis and Johnny Gargano because of last time when they were having their tag team match, Alpha Academy versus Panda Express, Johnny Wrestling, and Kevin Owens. Like, I get that. Um, them having their match, just those two, Otis and Johnny, it was, it was cool. I mean, it, was, it come on, it was cool. But uh, the match between Chad Gable and Braun Strowman, I think I'm over it. I feel like... I've seen these two have a run in one too many times. I just want if I hope this is not the storyline, the official storyline like that Braun Strowman is going to have to run with. Like I I I was looking forward to him being in some sort of other storyline. I don't know if this storyline is just like a holding place for him. And I'll explain, I'll explain why I think that. The reason why I feel like they have a lot more in store for Braun is because of last week's, you know, those QR codes. We've all been seeing them. I believe it was last week where they had the pig and then they had the wolf. The pig, I was thinking about Huskus. You know, Bray Wyatt, I was thinking about that. And then back when I was on Twitter, I saw this one individual. They like posted the wolf and then, because the wolf had red pants on. And they equated that to Braun Strowman. And I was like, hmm. So the next match that I want to talk to you guys about is the Angelo Dawkins versus Solo Sokoa match. Ugh, I love it. I love it. There was a little, some confrontation in the back. So you got the bloodline and then you got the street profits. So long story short, Angelo Dawkins ain't no punk and neither is Solo. So those two have their single singles match. Ugh, I'm telling you, I don't know what happened, but... I've always liked Angelo Dawkins, but I feel like he's gotten quicker and his maneuvers, his moves are just so freaking crisp. Like this was an enjoyable match and you guys already know I love Solo Sokoa. I'm sorry, like out of the Usos, the Uso brethren, Solo Sokoa was my favorite. Yeah, Jay, Jimmy, yada, yada, yeah, I don't care. Solo's my favorite. He's my favorite Us, like hands down. In the end, Solo Sokoa won. And why did he win? Because of Sami Zayn. And it wasn't even fully on purpose because he got rocked <laughs> by Angelo Dawkins. And then Solo Sokoa was able to take advantage of that and then get him. But Jay and Sammy were having some issues on the, on the ringside. And I was like, hold on, they're about to fight because they're pushing each other. See, I'm getting so excited. I'm moving my microphone. <laughs> I was expecting those two to start rolling. I'm just like, oh shoot, it's breaking down. It's breaking down. Like I'm, I, I will always be invested into the bloodline storyline because of Sammy. Like I've heard people say this before, and I and I agree. Like Sammy makes the bloodline story so much more juicy. It is so 
good. Like, when is what is going to happen? Like, I, I don't know how long Sammy is going to be in the bloodline. How long he's going to stay honorary Oose, especially with this whole issue with Jay, because it's not getting any better. But at the same time, when Roman says you in, you in. So, I, I, man, I don't know. I, I just don't know. But let me talk about the main event, which was a match between Alexa Bliss versus Io Scott. <music> Bailey and Bianca Belair were having their contract signing for their ladder match at Extreme Rules, which I, I am looking forward to it. I love the angle that Bianca Belair went like the, her promo <laughs> against Bianca Belair during the signing just made Bailey look so small. Like Bianca is getting so much more better and getting so much more confident. Like reminding me of the EST that was in NXT when she she broke Bailey down to size when she was talking about how she was just pretending to be someone. Now she's being her her real self like this heel this this insecure individual this one person who is trying to have everything that Bianca Belair has and how Bianca has worked so hard to get to where she is and you could just I, it, oh I was just like get, go ahead Bianca talk your talk your shiznet talk your shiznet then we see that Io Sky and Dakota Kai are beating up Asuka and Alexa Bliss and I'm just like a lot of mercy y'all done injured Asuka and Alexa looks like she is about to have all the cows in the world and then of course Bianca Belair runs back there to the rescue and that is how we get the match with Alexa Bliss versus Io Sky because Asuka it is in no shape <laughs> to have a match with anybody after that ambush so the match between Alexa and EO. Um, I feel like EO is a lot more advanced in her moveset than Dakota Kai. And overall, the match was good. I had a feeling though that EO Sky was going to win. One, two reasons why I thought so. One, because those girls, Bailey and Dakota Kai, are always going to intervene. And that always goes back to what I was saying earlier in my video, where it's just like they just need to stop with that. It just makes them look small. It makes them look small overall. And it makes them look less of a threat because they're needing to lean on their other two stalemates in order to get a win. So that's the first reason. The second reason why I knew that EO Sky was going to win is because. It would make sense. And the reason why I say it would make sense is the whole QR code that we saw. We actually saw it twice. The first time we saw it was when uh, Candice LeRae was in the back. And then the second time we saw that was when uh, during the whole contract signing with Bianca Belair and Bailey. So with the whole QR code, of course, me being me, I have my, 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 <laughs> my camera up like real like ready to go, right? And it's this like and i'll show it up on my screen but yeah it's like this blue screen all like pixely and stuff but then there's this painting and i've seen this painting before but it's the woman grabbing this man's hair while he's asleep and i'm just like wait a minute this is looking quite biblical to me i'm like is it samson and delilah like when sh he was asleep vulnerable she went to cut his hair because that was where his strength and his power was that the heavenly father gave to him so i was just like wait a minute hold on hold on hold on okay so i'm like what could this be this is what made me start thinking about alexa bliss and you're just like wait what? just let me let me explain last time we saw bray wyatt was when he was having his match last time i checked it was between Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. And he lost that match. Bray Wyatt lost that match. And it was because Alexa Bliss was, I forgot what thing she was like sitting on this large 
what is it like a do 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 like the little box that pops up like she was sitting on top of it and had like this like black liquid just coming down her face like she was a distraction and with that distraction Randy Orton was able to win the match so I was just like wait a minute and to parallel that I'm like that kind of makes sense to me because Alexa Bliss in that case was a vulnerable spot for Bray Wyatt and while he was distracted he lost so I was just like I wonder and it is just building and building at this point because Alexa Bliss has been losing back to back like her run-ins with damage control has not been successful and even the way she was looking at the camera before she had her match with Io Sky like I could see I could see that aggression that just like like she she was about to pop she was about to lose all of the marbles in the world and just like how I said Braun Strowman's storyline seems like a holding place for me i even feel like alexa bliss's storyline is a holding place because it's like she's not she's a shell of herself at this point like her character alexa bliss is a shell of herself so it's like either go back to the goddess or evolve and go into something else and i feel like she was so intriguing even though i prefer the goddess character she was so intriguing as bray wyatt's I don't even know what to call it, but <laughs> she, yeah, when she was having her storyline with Bray Wyatt. So you have Bray Wyatt, then you have Braun Strowman last week with the symbolism of that, uh, that cartoon character. And then this week you have this portrait of Samson and Delilah, a portrayal of both of them. And I'm like, hmm, Bray Wyatt and Alexa Bliss. So if this is like gonna be like the new Wyatt family of Bray, Alexa, and Braun, I, shoot, I'm here for it. I am, I might be the only one who's here for it, but I am quite interested. So I'm wondering where this is going to go because it. I'm loving these QR code messages. Like I'm telling you, like Triple H knows how to just keep the thread going, keep us moving. So guys, let me know what you thought about Monday Night Raw. Don't forget to comment down below and also don't forget to like and subscribe for more episodes and stay tuned for part two of the toxicity of the IWC series. Thanks so much for watching. Signing off. Bye.